Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at the new features of Journalytics. This is version 2 of Journalytics, released on 12th of October, with a new look and feel and a number of new exciting features. Let's take a look at the voice activated journal. In the account settings, you can now choose a language. As you can see here, there are many languages available and it also has variants for different versions of languages like American English and British English. You can also set whether you want voice dictation on or off by default. We already make it really easy for you to enter a journal for your trade. You just submit a trade and then you see the alert here. You click on that notification and we can edit the trade. We can now speak into the microphone and the journal will record whatever we say, including tags. Hashtag lucrative. This means less effort to maintain your journal. Full stop. This will work in your own language. Chinese, comma, Japanese, comma, Portuguese, comma, Arabic, and so on. Full stop. Note that you will need to get used to entering your journal like this. You do need to pronounce words clearly, whereas in normal conversation, it's natural to skip letters at the end of words, full stop. Voice dictation is only available on Google Chrome browsers, but it does work on PC, Mac, and mobile devices. Talk, save. Journalytics now has an audio newsreader. You can already select which news sources you want to have on the day overview. And you can now have selected stories read to you in real time. There's a number of voices available for the newsreader. I prefer Joanna, there you go. You can set the voice here and you can test it with the latest news release. Generation Rent says number of first time buyers has risen despite landlord's warnings. Or you can type in your own text. Over on the day overview page, you can see here, we can switch the audio on and off. My own preference is to switch the audio off when I'm not trading, but when I actually start trading, I have it on so it reads me the breaking news while I trade. Social sharing functionality allows you to share your pages in a number of ways. We currently have an interface to Twitter and Facebook. Now, note that Facebook integration allows you to post to groups and pages, but not direct to your timeline. Now, you can still post your timeline, and we'll show you how to do that shortly. You can also keep a blog of shared pages that people can subscribe to. To set up social sharing, just go to account settings and manage social accounts. Click add social accounts here and then you can go through the authentication process here. Now that that process does use pop-ups so you might need to disable any pop-up blocker you have running on your browser for that authentication to work. And as well as your social media accounts you can actually set up your blog name in here. Once you've set up a blog name you can't change it or rather you'd have to contact us to change it. So choose carefully when you do that. Okay, now we're all set up, let's see what we can share. So we can share trade notes, we can share a day overview, we can share a calendar, we can share my dashboard, we can share a leaderboard, or my trades, or we can share a leaderboard. Whatever filtering you have set on that page at the time you share it will be included on the share. So you could have a dashboard, for instance, looking at the last three weeks trade, just the S&P and the NASDAQ. Account numbers and people's names will not be visible for security reasons. To share something, just click the social share button that appears at the top right of any page that allows sharing. To put header images in that appear at the top on the front of the social media post, you can just paste images in here. You can enter text to go along with the post. You can choose which social media outlets you're going to post to. And finally, you can say whether you'd like to share this to the blog or not. 
Then you can password protect so that only those with the password can see the details of the post. Once you're done, click share and then you'll see the following page. If you click this button, you can copy a link that you can then post into any social media platform, even if it's not Twitter or Facebook, or you can post somewhere else such as a forum. Don't worry, you can get this link again if you forget. This post is now shared on Twitter and Facebook. We can see in the post a link here to the post itself. There you go. If we want to share the post manually, even after the event, we can just copy the link and put that directly into our timeline. And that's what it looks like when you share manually. In this case, we also shared it to the blog and you can see the posting on the Jigsaw blog there. You'll see that the blog name is app.journalytics.me slash blog and then the blog name that you put into your settings. In this case, I'm actually subscribed to another user's blog so I can see my posts and I can see somebody else's posts when I look in my timeline. I can click here to see their shared content. If I wanted to share that content on again, I could just copy that link and also post that to social media. So that's a summary of the new features in Journalytics version two. Thank you.